Let us pray together. Dear Lord, Holy Spirit, we invite you to come and to speak to us today. Lord, open our eyes to your ways. Lord, help us to see things your way. And Lord, illuminate our understanding. We need repentance. We need to change our minds. We need to see things your way. Not the way of the world. Speak to us, we pray. We humbly bow before you. We invite you to come and to help us understand Scripture, to help us explain Scripture to us. Speak to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, the last Sunday before Christmas. And in many churches in this part of the world, we would light the fourth Advent candle, symbolizing Mary, the mother of Jesus. I was brought up in the Greek Orthodox Church. And in the Greek Orthodox, in the Orthodox Church in general, the, uh, just like in the Catholic Church, Mary has, is very prominent. As a child, I remember I would be in the church and I would look up at the front and the top and I would see this huge mural of Mary holding baby Jesus. And the inscription was Platitera ton uranon, the one who is wider than the heavens. When I was 16, uh, I converted to the Reformed Church and the pendulum swung when it came to Mary. I went to the other extreme that I kind of I thought, who is Mary? Just a woman. You know, one of my, I remember of one of my Protestant friends saying, uh, if you have a toothache and you go to the dentist, you wouldn't be happy if they told you that, uh, sorry, the dentist is not here, but it's okay, sit down, his mother is going to see you. Certainly, in the Reformed Church, I was helped to, to put Jesus at the center, uh, you know, to, to give Jesus the eminence, the, to put Jesus in the most prominent place. And I thank God for that. And I, it's one of the good things I have taken from the Reformed Church. But perhaps we need to maybe try to find a better balance, uh, have a more balanced attitude towards Mary. So let's stop and reflect a bit about Mary today. You may have noticed I have put an icon up of Mary holding Jesus. I thought it would be a better background to in this season as we go towards Christmas. And one day I was just sitting and praying and, and reflecting and I was looking at this icon and I saw Jesus looking at Mary with such great love and affection. And I thought to myself, this is how much Jesus loved Mary. He loved her. Mary was dear to him. She carried him in her womb. She carried him in her arms. And he loved her. Let's stop for a few moments and reflect what does scripture say about Mary. The birth narratives, what we know about the birth of Jesus Christ, are found in only two of the four Gospels, in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. In the Gospel of Matthew we are told that Mary was found with child, by the Holy Spirit when she was engaged to Joseph. But that's pretty much it. In Luke we, we are told a bit more detail. We are told about an angel who went to visit Mary. 
We are even given the name of the angel, Gabriel. The Archangel Gabriel went to Mary to tell her that she was going to conceive miraculously and she was going to have a child. And this is how the angel greeted Mary. He said, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. In many of the modern translations, this last phrase has been dropped somehow because maybe in some text it's not found there, but in the majority of the text is there in the uh, New King James Version and the King James Version, the Authorized Version, they have this phrase, Blessed are you among women. Evlogimeni si en gynexi in Greek, which can be translated, you are blessed more than all women. Last week I spoke to you about the man who Jesus said that he was the greatest who ever lived, and that was John the Baptist. Today, in essence, the angel is telling us that the greatest woman, the greatest woman who ever lived, the one who, who was blessed among all women, the most blessed, that was Mary. Blessed are you among women. Later on we read in this same chapter, the first chapter of Luke, that Mary went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth sees her and she says, Blessed are you among women. She echoes what the angel had said. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why? Is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Elizabeth was an older woman by now. And here comes this young cousin of hers. And she treats her with such great respect. And she calls her the mother of the Lord, the mother of my Lord. You know, there was a great controversy in the 3rd and 4th century AD. In the liturgical texts of the church in the 3rd and 4th century, Mary was called Theotokos. Uh, normally translated in English as the mother of God, but more accurately translated as the one who gave birth to God. And uh, Nestorius, uh, who was the patriarch of Constantinople, he opposed this term. He, he suggested that Mary should not be called Theotokos, but Christotokos, Christotokos, the one who gave birth to Christ. So as to make a difference that she gave birth to him only physically. And Cyril of Alexandria uh, opposed Nestorius and he said you cannot divide Christ if you divide Christ then the plan of salvation is is uh, sabotaged Christ is both man and and God at the same time and sorry to, to bother you maybe with so much theology but the end result of this was that the Third Ecumenical Council took place in Ephesus in the year 431, if I remember correctly. And it was decided that it was appropriate for Mary to be called Theotokos, the one who gave birth to God. This is how exalted Mary was in the early church. The other two Gospels don't give us the birth narratives. They don't tell us about how Jesus was born. Mark is in such a hurry to, to go on and tell you about what Jesus did. 
and his message of salvation. And John goes actually beyond time, beyond the birth, back in time, to the very beginning or to, to the time before the beginning. And he tells us that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. And John goes on to tell us that, if you, you can read it in chapter 2, that Mary was there at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry. At that wedding in Cana, when Jesus performed his first miracle, he gave his first sign of who he was. When he turned the water into wine, we read that Mary was there with him. And then we read in verse 12 of chapter 2 of John that Jesus went down to Capernaum, he, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. Mary was there, part of that early time in Christ's ministry. And we see Mary again at the foot of the cross. When Jesus nailed on the cross, he looks at her and he looks at John and he says to John, Behold your mother. Even hanging on the cross, his love for his mother was just evident. He says to John, Behold your mother. And to read that from that time on, John took Mary in his own home and looked after her as his own mother. What made Mary great? If I read scripture correctly, I don't think and forgive me if I got this wrong, but I don't think that it was because of something that she did. I don't think that perhaps she was the most pious woman in Israel at the time of that, that God had decided that, that his son was going to be born. I don't think that she had some great characteristics and abilities. She was great because she was chosen by God to be the mother of his son. In fact, it was not her greatness, perhaps, that her qualification was, but her loneliness. You know, in her song, the, the song of Mary, the otherwise known as the Magnificat, we read Mary saying in Luke chapter 1 and verse... 51. God has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. How, how radically different God's idea of greatness is to our idea of greatness. I spoke last week about our need for repentance, our need for a constant change of our minds. How much we need to change our minds on what is great, on who is great. Mary was lowly and she was chosen by God to be the mother of his son. And perhaps another qualification, and I will finish with this, another qualification of Mary was, let's hear what Elizabeth said. She says about Mary, blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were taught her from the Lord. Blessed is she who believed. In this journey together towards Christmas, as we looked through the law and the prophets, as we looked in this pre-Christian era, and to considered great men and women of God, 
what was it that made them all great? It was their faith. And again here, blessed is he who believed. We read in Hebrews chapter 11, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen for by this the elders obtained a good report. All these people were great because of their faith. And Mary believed. Let me go back for a moment, please, to where, when I talk to you about the lowliness of Mary. When the angel spoke to Mary and told her what was going to happen, Mary finally bows and says, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. This is a rather polite translation. The word is Dhuli, slave. Behold, the slave of the Lord. Do you, do I, consider myself to be a slave of the Lord? Do we consider ourselves to be slaves of God? A slave has no will of his own. A slave is the property of their master. I have met many Christians who tell God what to do. I have met many Christians who argue with God. They're telling God off. Are you a slave of the Lord? Behold the slave of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. This is the greatness of Mary. Great in lowliness. Great in humility. And great in just accepting, just believing what God says. By faith, she became the mother of God. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, in this last Sunday before Christmas, this fourth Sunday in Advent, we stopped to consider and to reflect and to ponder on the greatest woman who ever lived. And we reflected that she was great in humility. We reflected that it was her humble faith that gave her the, the qualification to bear the Son of God in her womb and to give birth to our Saviour. Jesus, you love Mary, and we pray that we will also treat Mary with great love, respect, and reverence. Thank you that through the life of Mary, and through the life of all your great men and women in the Old Testament, we learn that when it comes down to it, what makes a big difference is faith. Help us to humbly believe 
in the name of Jesus, who was born of Mary, we pray. Amen.